Cecil, haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, what's up everybody, Kenan here, and uh, we are hanging out in a new spot. I don't think you guys have uh, been here in a long time, but there is Cecil, and there's my buddy Larry Wood. Hi everyone. There he is, my good friend Larry. He's gonna help us answer this question today. It's of course Ask Cam Kenan, and I love Larry's backyard. I just wanna give a quick pan. He's got some cyclora, he's got beautiful plants, and uh, as we'll see here as we wander around, he's got tortoises that just live in every nook and cranny. And today's question is about tortoises, uh, and it's from Karen V. And uh, you know what there, Larry? She asks this. Hmm. She's got herself a uh, Herman's tortoise, and she asks, How, if a tortoise buries itself underground a few inches, can they still breathe? How long can they stay underground? Her horse, excuse me, it's not a Herman's, it's a horsefield tortoise, which is a Russian tortoise. Okay, so the horsefield tortoise loves to dig. I have a few places where she can go uh, really deep and she loves to dig there and cover herself over. Is it safe to just leave her alone till she comes out uh, herself? Love to watch your videos, never miss them. Thank you so much, Karen, I really appreciate it. And so excited to be talking about this particular um, subject because I wanted to bring Larry in because I've learned some really interesting things. As you guys know, Larry is a marine biologist and he is uh, really keyed into sea turtle physiology. That's like the love of his life, but he is also a turtle and as you can see, rhino iguana lover. He's got a few different cyclora iguanas. We've also got, oh, here come some tortoises. Let's go meet them. Now these aren't necessarily tortoises that dig, but um, I'm gonna start this off by saying, yes, it's okay to let that tortoise, hey, wait a minute, I know this gal. I know this gal, you got her for me, man. That's very awesome. Good, yes. Yeah, You're very great. cool. What a cool yellow foot tortoise. And how about this gorgeous, gorgeous, lightly colored uh, cherry head tortoise. Now, to start answering your question there, Karen, it's totally fine to let that tortoise uh, bury on its own, that's no big deal. Just make sure that the, the climate is conducive to the animal. If it wants to bury, it's probably burying to get away from some heat, some extremes in climate. Um, you don't want it to stay there for very long unless it's cool and the animal is trying to hibernate because Russian tortoises will hibernate uh, in the wild and they will also do that behavior in captivity as well. What a cute little animal. I am so excited to see this tortoise, by the way. Sorry, so anyway, man, what we were getting into, um, it, it, it kind of brought in a larger question. And the larger question is, let's talk a little bit about cold-blooded reptilian physiology um, because a lot of people get goes. worried. Yeah, I gotta watch my toes. <laughs> a lot of people worry uh, about their animals and how they breathe. Now, reptiles, they breathe differently than, say, mammals, for example. Well, sure. I mean, one of the most basic differences between the reptiles and the mammals is that the reptiles are a cold-blooded animal. They're called ectotherms, right? And, of course, mammals are endotherms. We're, we're warm-blooded animals. And so their overall requirement for oxygen intake is lower than ours overall because their metabolism is largely maintained by the temperature that they're surrounded by. So we have a higher budget, you know, if you want to call it that, for oxygen than the reptiles do. Uh, and that's so interesting. And they start out that way, okay? Okay. And the other kind of cool thing about them that makes them different from us, which you don't always think about, is our resting state is breathing. Right? So off you go to sleep, when you do, you go to sleep and you, <laughs> you breathe. It's a normal natural thing that you don't have to think about doing. Their natural state or resting state is apnea or not breathing. Right? Really? So Wait a minute. You'll notice that when a tortoise wants to go ahead and take a breath, suddenly it takes a breath. So it so rests. It normally with... it's resting, it's not actually breathing. Ah, uh, this is why I love to come over here. I just learned something. I didn't realize that reptiles will just, when they rest, kind of hold their breath. Well, mostly tortoises. You'll find that lizards will breathe a little bit more regularly. Right. But you'll see snakes will do the same thing. All of a sudden, you'll see them take a breath. But wait a second mm -hmm. now. The reason that tortoises aren't breathing in their resting state comes pro I'm going to guess here. Let's see if I do a good job with the PhD here. Um, they don't possess a diaphragm. And so in order for tortoises to breathe more efficiently, 
they have to move a little bit, don't mm -hmm. they? Doesn't it help uh, with their respiration when they well, actually move? What they move? do is instead of having a muscle that's dedicated to breathing, that okay. like we have called the diaphragm, they use all their muscles. So the muscles that surround their body cavity. So they'll use their appendicular muscles. Okay. They'll use the muscles that are found along their lungs, inside their belly, and so on. So the idea is they kind of create negative pressure by going, pulling their muscles away from the center and in goes the air and then out goes the air again. So they kind of use their whole bodies. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, up. man. And you know, you gotta remember these animals are encased in their rib cage, right. essentially. It's like a box. That's They're right. A box. So they had to figure out how can we do this now? Yeah. We are and actually and their ribs don't expand, expand like, like ours. ours. It's it's a rigid setup. So. All right, so there you go. So so Karen, we're learning a lot here today. Uh, and the number one thing is that these animals, turtles and tortoises, are able to really uh, use uh, their breathing more efficiently. Right. So what the trigger for us is that tells us we need to breathe is a change in the pH of our blood. Okay. And that's because what happens is, is that carbon dioxide builds up in our blood and causes our blood's pH to change. So that sets a trigger to our system that says, you need to get rid of that carbon dioxide and bring in new oxygen. Gotcha. Well, okay. while you're so, telling us about this, I don't mean oh, to cut oh, you yeah, off, buddy. I want to try and find, I, I want to have something cool yeah, for you guys to look at when you're learning all this. Here, I'm so on. sorry I cut you off. All so, right, yeah. you know where you were, right? because I want to just make sure we get this animal because I want to hear about this, uh, the pH levels and so on. Does this have anything to do with uh, um, ATPs and all that good stuff? We don't have to get that crazy, do we? There you fly river, man. <laughs> I love that animal. Beautiful. Let's get some underwater shots while you tell us all about how these animals do their thing. Go ahead, Larry. So anyhow, what happens is, is the pH of our blood is going to tell us when it's time for us to breathe again. Well, as it turns out, turtles have a much higher tolerance for that change in the pH of their blood than we do. So they're enabled, uh, they're able to extend the time that they can use before they have to uh, breathe again and get rid of that CO2. Okay. The great thing about having that big shell which is ribs, which is all full of calcium, is the calcium serves as a buffer to the acidity levels in their blood. So that enables them to go a little bit longer without air. So down to a molecular level, um, their physiology is enabling them to do things that mammals just aren't able to do. And so I really love, I love hanging out with Larry because we really dive into some really nitty gritty things here. Because again, like I said, it, it goes beyond just an animal not breathing. Um, There's so many other adaptations that these animals have, have um, evolved. Uh, and chief among them, you being a, a sea turtle expert, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the sea turtles are able to do uh, with some of these incredible depths they're able to reach. Well, sure, now uh, with sea turtles, they have an additional challenge. You know, freshwater uh, turtles certainly hold their breaths for a long time and they're very aquatic, but they don't tend to go quite as deeply <laughs> yeah. as sea turtles do because of course the ocean offers a uh, third dimension uh, that provides a lot of food and resources down at the bottom. So sea turtles have been able to kind of balance the need for oxygen, like we were talking about, with the need to be submerged. So they've adapted a little bit more than those other species to the ability to be active and, and get food. Now, some of the really neat things that they have that enable them to do that are very, very high volume breaths at the surface. So when a sea turtle comes to the surface, it does a very, very high volume, huge lungs. Speaking of that diaphragm, they lack a diaphragm, but boy, they use everything they got to shove the air out and shove it back in again. Once they take the air down with them, remember that at depth, for scuba divers who know this, what happens is all of those air pockets inside your body collapse due to pressure. So when they dive, their lungs really aren't full of air anymore. There's no air there. So they store the oxygen in their bloodstream. Wow. So they have a nice high capacity in their bloodstream to carry that oxygen around to everything. Again, back with what we were saying before about their higher tolerance for the lactic acid that builds up, that pH change we were talking about, enables them to stretch their dives. Now, of course, they're limited like everything else. So the more active they are, if they're swimming around very actively or feeding, of course, they're going to use their oxygen stores a little bit more quickly. 
let's say it's warmer, mm -hmm. it's going to use its oxygen stores a little more quickly. So it doesn't mean that there's a set amount of time that the animal has to be underwater. They balance all those different needs. And, the same and a sea turtle at sleep can stay underwater for several, sometimes sure. even seven hours. Is sure. that possible? Now that's that that's that apnea thing again. Their resting state isn't breathing. Wow. So when it's time to breathe, they go and get the air. Now, the other really Very neat cool. thing is they're not even necessarily the, the champs. If you think about it, think of all the freshwater turtles and land turtles who live in temperate zones. Uh, I was actually going to bring this up as, as a point of uh, right. something people should know about. I think I know where you're going. You take it away, bud. Well, what it is is they have to hold their breaths for months. Because of hibernation. Because of hibernation. And the champion, the champion for air-breathing vertebrates uh, for holding its breath is the painted turtle. That animal in addition to having some type of antifreeze in its blood, <laughs> uh, can actually get oxygen through the linings of its mouth, uh, uh, through the lines of its neck uh, and mouth, and actually it's cloaca. They call cloacal respiration, but basically what's happening is it's diffusion, isn't it? It's just That's kind correct. of having uh, mm -hmm. small molecules. Well, they, are they, kind they of have going their through. capillaries or their mm -hmm. blood are very close to the surface of the skin. And that allows the trans, uh, kind of the the transition of the oxygen and carbon dioxide through the membranes yeah. there. Yeah, very yeah. cool. And then, and the other thing is that um, we have a big problem as mammals when we are deprived of oxygen. Uh, our neurological system isn't good at recovering. One of the big problems that we have with drowning victims is that people who have been without oxygen in their brain for quite a while sustain a fair amount of cellular damage. What can sometimes be even worse is the reintroduction of oxygen back into the system because that creates a variety of free radicals and other nasties inside your cell that can cause further damage. It's amazing how freshwater turtles like the painted turtles have an amazing ability to fight off those effects of the reintroduction of oxygen into their cells. So they're used in university settings like at Florida Atlantic University in labs to understand how their neurological system is able to not only go that long without oxygen, but how to reintroduce it in the springtime for a turtle yep. back into the system without the damage that we find uh, in mammals. That is really, really cool, man. I love hanging out with this guy. And I hope you guys appreciate his time. So uh, in the comments, let him know you appreciate his time. I want to get him on this channel as much as possible. We're good pals and he's always got so much information. Man, I can't thank you enough yeah, for letting me come you. over here. Uh, you know, so basically um, we learned a lot about these animals. There was one point I wanted to make before I jumped off when you were talking about uh, the reintroduction. Yes, here it is. I've actually had tortoises and turtles that I thought have drowned and died. And they were without, there was water in their lungs. I did turtle CPR. Yes, you can do that. Um, it, it involves moving the neck in and extending the legs out and then uh, kind of reversing that. It's kind of like CPR for turtles, holding the animal inverted. I was able to drain the animal out and if it's not, I'm talking, it had to have been underwater for about an hour, okay? I got this animal, it took <gasps> one giant breath, laid exhausted for a long time, and then started moving around again. Yeah, so right. incredible survivors. Yeah, uh, we learned a great deal from Larry yeah. today, so awesome guys. I hope you enjoyed this, Karen. Hope everyone else out there does as well. Uh, go to Florida Hawksbill on Instagram. Florida Hawksbill Project, I yeah, believe. Florida Hawksbill Project. Go follow him on Instagram because you're going to learn a lot about what he does with the National Save the Sea Turtle Foundation uh, for all kinds of beautiful sea turtles in and around the waters of Florida and, and actually all over the globe in some cases. You're all over the place. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notifications button and head on over to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan where you can uh, help us on our mission to educate everyone out there about these amazing animals. Once again, thank you, brother. So Appreciate long, it. See you guys.